That was Eddie Vedder, Society. We have agreed for which we have agreed. People want more than they need. This is Ryan Keyes, and I am your host of Spirituality with a Spin. And we have been talking about Twin Flames Life Partners loving and living with a couple laughs on the side. Today we are going to dive in just as deep as we've been going. We're going to talk about topics that are possibly taboo, but definitely true. I had five attempts at doing this show earlier. And each attempt I did, I scrapped. I deleted 20 minutes of work five times. There you go. Why? Because I am damn 100% going to be authentic and I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to put myself out there for you all that are following me, for that are giving me your vulnerability and contacting me and telling me your stories and that we're working together to help you at the crossroads. I will not shut down. I will not allow myself to become just a mouth on the air. If I don't come to you with heart open and arms open, I do myself an injustice and I limit the amount of love and knowledge that we will gain by listening and interacting. Eddie Vedder is a brilliant singer. I encourage you to listen to that song. It talks about society and how society has screwed us up in some ways. Let me ask you a question. You're here because you're looking at twin flames. You're here because you're looking for love. You're here because you've encountered something, either running or chasing or separation or maybe success. Let us know down below. Get involved. We need you as part of this movement. Now through the course of your twin flame experience and all the awakening signs and all the stages, and we've talked about several of those, we have yet to discuss separation and healing. We've touched on it by letting go and by coming from a place of unconditional love. But let me just dive in a little bit deeper past the twin flame, past the name, past the brand. What about an awakening? Do you feel an awakening? Because and even this week was a shift. The world is on edge, my friends. We are witness to a circus in the media. What is going on? What is going on, really? Reality has changed. Time has changed. We are going into a spiritual awakening, an intuitive inviting for the spirit. Our hearts are being called forth. This twin flame phenomenon is expanding and it will explode in 2017 because the conscious creator is calling you to create, to move forward, to heal, to cleanse, to be an example, to be a light in the darkness. So I came across an article that talks about the seven spiritual signs of an awakening and I found it quite ironic. When you listen to these, first, experiencing unconditional love as a state of being. Two, clearly seeing, knowing, or feeling what is real, getting the big picture. Three, a lack of interest in looking outside of yourself for completion because you found it inside. Four, experiencing blissful moments of serenity, peace, love, and sequestered silence through meditation, being in the moment. Five, recognizing the beauty and the magic of the divine present with every moment within everything. Six, feeling and experiencing your energy centers opening and activating. Oh, give me a hallelujah. Seven, being aware of yourself as a spiritual being present in physical form, one with all that is, ever was, and ever will be. I got goosebumps. Holy shit. Tell me. Tell me, spiritual beings, light workers, oh yeah, you feel that? You tell me seven real signs of spiritual awakening, and then you tell me the, the seven signs of a twin flame awakening. Do you see a correlation there? Do you see 
similarities. I feel it. I see it. I sense it. Oh my God, I'm I'm feeling that. I can't even. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear a smile? Because I am smiling from ear to ear right now. If you can hear a smile, I am wearing it. Because this is a shift in consciousness, baby. This is consciousness coming alive. This is allowing. It is an art, and it is on fire. And the reality of this spiritual situation is that it is it is about becoming one. It is about being one with spirit and soul, body and mind. It is coming together. The improbable, the impossible is now a possibility because we are going to dig deep into the present and we're going to sit here and we're going to stay here and we're going to look through the eyes of what's happening right now. We aren't looking behind us because that's where the fear and the pain lie. We're not looking up too far ahead because that's where expectation and doubt will find a home. We're looking right here, right now, right in the present moment, empowered. Can you tell that? Can you see that? Do you see that spiritual awakening? Do you see how it rhymes? Do you see how it goes in and interweaves in the twin flame protocols? God, baby, wow. Wow. And then people want to tell me the twin flames don't exist. Because I feel all of that. I feel it all. I feel it every bit of it. You know what I'm saying? So. So now you know the twin flame is about ascension. It's about awakening. It's not just about that beautiful moment when your lips touch and your eyes meet. And you kiss that person so deeply, so intricately, so intimately that you can't hug them tight enough, that you want to dive into their body, that you want to rip your chest open so they can crawl inside. And that still isn't close enough. That kind of loving, that kind of energy is right around the corner. And how do we get there? Because if you found it and it ran and you gave chase and it's gone, let me just tell you, I will say it again. Soulmates are not second best. You can find this kind of love with a soulmate that is going to give you empowerment, that's going to give you some wonderful advantages in life on loving and giving and receiving and living. But if you can get that twin flame synchronization to work, wow, the world is on fire. The world is on fire. I wanted to just talk about as a recap, right? Because we talked about the twin flame test. We talked about some of the signs. Again, let me go over these and tell me if you're feeling them. Talk to me down below, people. Let me hear you. Give me, give you, give me a hallelujah. Give me an amen. Give me a hell yeah. Whatever you want to throw at me, you give it to me. But you give it down below because we are getting this done, right? We are not here to play games. We are here to get things done. We are here to put passion at the forefront and we are here to operate out of a place of compassion and get things done. We are here to heal. We are here to understand. We are here to acknowledge. We are here to survive and to thrive. And I'm sorry for getting so excited and so empowered, but I, this subject, there was no way I was going to be able to script this. Jesus. No wonder I had to scrap this show five times. I just got to let it flow. I got to just be organic. I just got to talk it out. Just point me in a direction. I'm like a typical man. I'm like a wind-up car. You pull me back and just let me go that way. And I'll just go fast as I can and with as much power and velocity as it needs to get there. So how will you know when this twin flame pops into your life? Tell me. How will you know? Instant spark? Sure. Physical chemistry? Maximum tilt? That spark that instantly ignites your heart, your soul where you feel like you've known them forever, where you have seen their eyes before, where you can feel that burning in your heart, that belonging, that you know that you know that you know this is your home. You have as much love for that person and you don't know why. It's instant, but you feel this unexplainable love. And then if you're a runner, that unexplainable love makes you pull back because you feel smothered. If you're a chaser, that unexplainable love is like, shit, I need to get some more of that. Come back. <laughs> That's right. An et eternal, ethereal bond. Mm -hmm. It is. And it is a bond that has been around since the, the time began. A time began bond. Make that a Disney movie. Two, 
Deja vu. And that, that does rhyme, doesn't it? I'm so damn clever. I'm just kidding. So deja vu without a doubt. Synchronicities. You're going to feel it a lot. It's going to be popping off all around you. You're going to feel like you've been there, done that, seen that, been in that. Two souls recognizing each other. The paradox of purpose and present happening all around you. Things that you can't explain, but you've experienced. Things that you haven't seen, but you've seen together. Places you may have crossed paths and not even known. It's beautiful. And then you come into that what's next phase. Where all this stuff is going on inside of your mind. Where you're all connected and you're all gushy and feely. And you talk about how your heart is. You talk about plans. You make plans. You're making plans. You may have only known each other for a week and you're making plans. You're opening retreats. You're opening up centers. You're, you're changing the world. And you just met. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're changing the world. You just met. Now that's some, that's some energy. I'm talking about that right now. You just met. You walked into the door. You just saw the love of your life. You just eye contacted that girl and she is yours. You are hers. You hear her voice and that voice sounds familiar. And then you start talking and you know, you just know that that's your home. They feel your pain. They feel your sadness. You are deeply connected. That kind of connection where you go to the store and you bring home what they were thinking about. That kind of connection where you go to text that person and they already just popped you with a text right then. That kind of connection where you go to text them and they get that text at 11, 11. And you sent that, and you sent that shit at nine o'clock and it just all of a sudden, poof, it delayed itself and somewhere in the ether and then boom, popped out at 11, 11. Right? Synchronicity is all along the way. And then you just have this strong level of comfort, security, stability, this ability to trust that person. You're very intimate with them. You're very outgoing with them. You're very adventurous with them. You have a place of vulnerability to share your soul with them where you do not feel judged. And that's from when you met them for the first time. It's immediate. It's warm. It's welcoming. It's safe. And you know in your heart of hearts that the person would never hurt you on purpose. It might be inadvertent. It might be by accident, but they would not hurt you because they sought out to hurt you. And then balanced, all about balance, masculine and feminine. You guys got it worked out. You're completely complimentary. Everything is natural. Everything is balanced. I myself am a little bit to the feminine side. So my, my uh, twin would be a little bit more to the tomboy side, handling stuff, getting dirty, right? While I'm out getting my nails done. She's out, like, riding a horse. Do you really think I get my... Yeah, okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I, I have got my nails done. I don't get them painted, of course, but I, I get a manicure. I told you, I'm masculine, but I am in touch with my feminine. I got to own it. Got to be honest. So, you also notice there'll be a kind of a student-teacher relationship, kind of a age gap as well, most likely, not always. Many times you will look very similar. Right? You'll be drawn to each other like this magnetic, inclusive attraction, like this tug, a physical tug, and 100% unconditional love. We talked about that. We discussed that. If you don't know what unconditional love is, back this up and go listen to the other thing that I just put up yesterday, the other episode, and we talked all about unconditional love and how that works. To, to have, to hold, for richer, for poorer, for sickness and health. Till death do us part. Shit, we're all married. Aren't we? This world is ours. Karmically, we are all married. Social karma, baby. To have and to hold. This world holds us all. Through richer for poorer, we're all richer and poorer at one point and another. And this world holds us all. We're all connected. Start recognizing that. And then you are both soul driven and you have a purpose. You both see an end game, a goal. You are wanting to help animals or feed the hungry or do something passionate or do something. You might want to be digital nomads and go help with the elephants in Thailand. You might want to go work at an orphanage in Kathmandu. You might want to open a retreat in Thailand. Whatever that might be. You want to make the world better and you both have the same mission. 
and many times that mission will actually be cohesive. One person might even be doing it, the other person's talking about it, and you're like, holy shit, I just actually have done that. And you're talked about that? Like in my case, I've got all kinds of missions for the world. I want to save this planet. I am passionate about it. And you watch me. I am going to make a mark and do something. I'm going to help people save themselves. It's what I'm here to do. It's my mission. And it was what I wish. And I manifest it by speaking it and embracing it and respecting it. And then the other part of this whole equation about signs that you might know, this is your twin flame, is you're both expecting each other. You just knew it was going to happen. Not the right time, but the time where the universe is kind of conspiring to give you that moment. Now, because of the running chasing mechanism, it won't be the right time. It'll be the time. But that'll be the right time for you to change, for you to awaken, because your awakening process that we've already just talked about is synonymous and happening right now during the course of this awakening with the twin flame. So you are you are double dipping. You are double dipping in the world of awakening. It's beautiful, isn't it? And one of you will be a little bit more mature in certain subjects than the other, right? Like I said, the teacher and the student connection and it won't be about everything but it will be about some things so that's 10 signs right there that you may have encountered your twin flame right now I wanted to talk about this whole gambit of separation but honestly I'm going to keep today's show a little bit shorter because I don't want to overwhelm you And I wanted to catch everybody up for what's going on and what this ascension means and how this ascension is changing things and how this twin flame phenomenon is just taking on new insight. Now, I will give you a few things that are crucial for this journey on the twin flame phenomenon. And I feel they're crucial. Um, I've researched quite a bit and I've seen that I'm not the only one. Some essential insight for good or bad. One of the biggest things is, and a lot of these are based on the hermetic laws, right? And we've talked about the law of gender, the law of cause and effect and those things, but this is kind of a synopsis of that to put it in a little package to give you a taste of the other videos so that you can go back and watch when you want to dive in deeper. As within, so without. Shifting out of running, separation, and struggle, what you resist will persist, right? Your universe is an energy, it is motion, it is moving, it is a universal river, it is a river of knowledge. Everything vibrates, everything has a frequency, everything is in motion. So if you want to find that propellant to make this purposed event come to pass. Start looking at it as it creates as you go, that it's energetic. And then you understand that you can't hold on to it. You need to just experience it. You need to allow it. And then you're not going to allow the past pain body and the past fear body to be in the present moment telling you to be um, feeling like you're not good enough, that you don't, that you're lacking something. You're not, it's not going to tell you all these little lies that society is embedded in you to make you put pressure on your other twin flame to cause a running situation, right? Because you're going to allow them. You're going to pace yourself. Don't jump in. This is not a romantic relationship that is like your normal romantic relationship. This requires some patience and some understanding. You know, don't be like me, all thirsty and hungry, and you like show up and you're like, shit, where's dinner? I'm hungry. (laughs) Everybody's like scared. They're like, they don't even want to get around you. So pace yourself. Take a minute. Take a breather. Let it run its course. Don't try to force it. And if your twin needs space, give him space. If you don't give him some space, you might be giving them the rest of separation to go away so act with humility and kindness and love and compassion 
Just keep that in mind. The universe is always moving. What you resist will persist. Will persist. What you resist will persist. So don't go resisting a lot of stuff. If your twin flame says something, just accept it for what it is and, and back away. Don't let your story from the past try to write the future. One of the other crucial things that I really find is what you focus on is what you're going to get more of. Um, Wayne Dyer talked about that. Your thoughts become things, right? It's another law of energy. So if you engage in a deeper, deeper um, feeling of connection, but you also look at this as a point of ascension, like we talked about the ascension, right? You're ascending. So focus on yourself as well. Pull back, do some work on yourself, but maintain that connection. It's not going anywhere, right? When we focus on a particular fear or worry or something over and over and over, we're putting our personal energy into that and we are manifesting that and we are energetically calling that out and we're tying ourselves up in that mess. So be careful what you put your energy into. Use creative visualization, but use it wisely. You can think about your path down the road. You can think about all the things that you guys want to do. But give some space. Pace it out. You don't got to do it all today, right? You don't have to change the world today. You just met your twin. You don't have to make babies this minute, right? And many of the twin flames, from what I've been researching as well, they don't necessarily want children. Very interesting. So don't let your imagination and your worry dictate what you're going to get, right? Because often what you're worrying about will become what you're wanting and what you're wanting will become your reality. So don't do that. It's crucial. Um, uh, it, there is um, Dolores Cannon and she did a lot of hypnosis into this phenomenon. You can check her out on YouTube as well. She had some great stuff. So don't fall into the pit of the horror of the separation and the running and the chasing. If you are just in the beginning stages, slow down. Slow down. And manifest good stuff. Focus on good stuff. Focus on self-development as well. Right? And even if you're stuck in the running and the chasing phase, don't focus on the running. Don't focus on the chasing. Don't focus on the stress of the separation. Focus on that which is, and that is you. And then you need to not take these emotions too seriously in some, some aspects, right? You got to get control over the body. The body, as I've said time and time again, is a guitar. It is an instrument. It only has a certain amount of strings to play a certain amount of notes. The body can only cry. It can only yell. It can only feel pain. It can only laugh, right? There's a couple of things that the body does really well, and the soul does everything. So you've got an everything translating into a got a couple things and then you get a crossed wire so the emotions take control over this roller coaster and then you're up and down and you can't control it so you need to get control over it right that means not getting depressed not getting panicked not allowing these um, ptsd style symptoms to take over and then if your health starts getting impacted a lot of times, like I talked about, your throat chakra, your adrenal glands, your thyroid, palpitations, cold sweats, feeling anxious are all going to happen during the ascension process and the twin flame ascension process. So slow down, take a breath, get, a, get away, get into the nature, uh, put your feet in the grass and sand, right? Recalibrate yourself, seek center, seek balance, yoga, meditation, silence, Eat good bearing, food, uh, good fruit bearing stuff like uh, life giving foods. Honor your temple. For instance, if you feel low and you feel off, acknowledge it, but don't get tangled up in it. Still get outside, still do something. And then another one is don't let anybody outside dictate what you are or who you are or what you're doing. Because infinitely, you are your own power, right? If someone doesn't agree with what we're talking about, if somebody doesn't believe in twin flames, okay, that's fine. You don't have to. I do. You don't have to believe in it. You don't have to believe that's the color red, but if I believe it's red, it's red because I see red, right? So understand that society will mostly teach us the opposite of what we are looking at as truth. We are conditioned. 
and we're not conditioned in the, into the elevation of self. We're not conditioned into allowing or conditioned into the fear-based mechanisms and to finding fear, right? So there is a, a great uh, quote by Mahatma Gandhi. I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. Your life is yours. You get to choose what's right for you. Um, Jerry Hicks said one time, uh, Abraham Hicks and uh, Esther Hicks. Jerry Hicks said, I don't care how wildly you wave your arms around as long as you don't hit me. Right? Do your own thing. As long as you're not hurting someone else, as long as it only affects you and it is you, then do it. And it's crucial because the twin flame journey is about being and becoming and seeing a new way to be. It, you guys are different than anybody has ever imagined. This connection hasn't been around for a long time. It has been sporadically and people have talked about it, but this is happening in a mass uh, amounts now. And one of the other uh, uh, good points for this is you are the creator of your journey. No one is going to do it for you, right? And would you want them to? So you create as you go. You create your thoughts, your feelings, your mental imagery. You create your vision boards. You create your motivation. You will ultimately create your twin flame. You will ultimately create the running and chasing. You will ultimately create the separation. You will ultimately create the reunion. It's about dealing with your karma. Personal, past, ancestral, social. If you can get out of that loop, if you can fix those patterns, if you can find that awareness, if you can begin to operate in self, then you have a different way of looking at things. And then your twin flame will be feeding off of that acknowledgement and that awareness as you go, even though you may even be separate. They still get the benefit of what you're learning through that twin flame telepathy. And then think about this. Welcome the love that you believe you deserve. When I was doing the law of attraction, I, I said this in one other uh, episode. I used to tell people, you have to have attraction, action, and then satisfaction. People were like, well, what the hell is the satisfaction part for? And I was like, because here you spend all this time attracting something to you. You're acting on it. And when you finally get it, you just want something else. You got that grass is always greener complex. That option's open. Come on. If you spend all this time attracting it and working on it and manifesting it, and when you get it, make sure you hold on to that shit. Don't forget about how good it is, right? It's crucial. Don't let laziness creep in. Don't let the body convince you about those things. Don't get stuck in a rut. So keep clearing out your karmic patterns. Keep forging ahead. Hopefully now you see that this ascension process is an exciting process, that the twin flame analogy with the twin flame ascension and the spiritual call that we are all feeling is synonymous. It is an event. It is happening. It is transpiring. Come to this community. Bring that information. Bring your experience. Let your successes be heard. If you need help at the crossroads, contact me. We will work it out. If, you're, if I'm doing a reading with you or if I've done a reading with you, thank you for being awesome and for listening and for being part of this movement. Whatever you learn, wherever you go, always share. Help other people be in the know. Right? Be a light. You're all being called as light workers. And let's do it. Let's light this bitch up. Part of my French. <laughs> Does that get me... I wonder if that gets me uh, censored on YouTube. Hopefully not. All right, so peace, light, and love. Next time I come out, I'm going to be talking about the depression cycle and how to handle that separation and how to motivate that separation into making magic happen so you can call that twin back in. We're going to do it one day at a time. I will see you on the other side, my phenomenal lovelies. Thank you.